Hi, so today um, basics around error in Go, so how to create them, how to manipulate them. So error is just a built-in interface and you can see that it's only one method which is error taking no argument and then um, rendering a string. So as long as you have a struct which is implementing that method, you have an error. So let's start and see how you can build uh, an error. So the first way of instantiating one is, as I said, just to build um, a struct and implementing this error method, rendering a string. So let's have our struct. So we're going to call it my error, for instance. And we can give a property called extra info, which is just a string. You can put there as many properties you want. And then let's implement the interface. So it's going to be an instance uh, method. So um, error and then string, as we saw. And then we can just uh, return a format string. So we can wrap this um, extra info, for instance. So we can say got an error, and then um, and then just uh, using this uh, error dot extra info. So to prove that this is an error, we can declare a variable e and declare it as an error, and then assign e as um, uh, my error struct. We can give boom as extra info. And you can see that there's no compile error, and we can print that. We can run that. So there you go. This is our first uh, error. Um, the second way to build uh, an error, you can use um, a constructor method available in the errors um, package. So you do errors dot new. And you can see that new is taking a string. So we can put explosion, for instance. So it's a very simple and quick way to have an error. But obviously, you are limited in the um, properties or inf extra information that you could carry in the f as opposed to the first way to do it. All right. So. Um, Let's see how um, you can check an error type in practice. So uh, for that, you have to declare a pointer to the type of the error you want to check against. And then we can use this method uh, dot as from the same errors uh, package we use for new. And then as is taking uh, the error you want to check and then a pointer to the um, error um, that you de we define on line 28. So it's comparing E against C basically. And you can see that it's coming back true because E is the same type as um, pointer C and pointer C is a, a my error. And E is indeed a my error. Um, uh, a second tool that's available from this errors uh, package is um, the method dot is so for that you um i need a, um to wrap um an error so this is how you do it you use fmt for instance errors uh, formatting and you use um the keyword uh, percentage w which is an error and you can see that e is wrapped in e wrapped and then we, you can use the method that I was mentioning to you, errors.is. And we can check that e wrapped is containing our error e, basically. So that's useful when you are wrapping a lot of information and you have um, subsequent uh, errors swallowed into each other to check that you have indeed this error in what Go is calling uh, the error chain. Uh, here you saw that it came back true and here I'm just changing um, to another error. So E is containing extra information boom, but here I'm comparing with nope and you can see that it's coming back false. I'm just going to put it back to E. So now let's see how um, you control the flow with those errors. So 
I'm just gonna comment out the all code and um, let's define a first function. Um, let's return let's return uh, an integer and um, an error. So you'll often see in Go that uh, methods are returning a tuple, like a value and an error. That's a common design. So here we're returning int and error. So let's simply do uh, returning one, two, three, and then nil. So nil is the valid error. It's an empty error, basically. So here we can, in the main function, we can invoke return int. Uh, we can um, assign i and uh, r to the um, return values. And another pattern that you will often see is um, checking the presence of error. So you just do is error different uh, from nil. So in that case, we're going to do a log fatal, which which is the equivalent of logging and then panicking, so exiting with a non-zero status. So here you can see that it's simply returning one, two, three. But now we're gonna change the nil with an error, with um, my error, for instance. Uh, you can say um, something bad happened, for instance. Um, ah, it needs to be um, Okay, so you can see that it's um, uh, returning an exit code one and logging the error here. So th that's how you can interrupt the flow at line 20. Um, now let's see how you can chain um, methods rendering multiple errors. So here we're just gonna build a function called return string. Um, it can take uh, an integer uh, x and then uh, rendering a string and an error. So we can do um, a slightly meter uh, function. So if x is uh, greater than 42, we can return um, an OK response. So that's fine. And then returning nil. Otherwise, we can um, throw back an error. For instance, so empty string because the, your function is returning a tuple string error. So you have to render a string as first argument, a uh, first value, sorry. And then um, we are going to use my error again. And as extra information, we can say that it's below 42. So then we can invoke the function, return string, um, you can send 40. And we can assign the returned value to s and uh, error two. Um, we can use exactly the same pattern to stop the flow if any error um, is returned from return string function. Uh, here we can just use uh, our previous integer because return string is taking an integer. So will receive one two three so let's try so you see that um, uh, one two three is coming back and then that's fine so we didn't exit um, we didn't panic basically now we, we can uh, try 40 a tiny typo copy pass error so it's error two that we want to panic so then you can see that um, with 40 the flow was interrupted at line 26. So it's important to understand that error in Go are values and here I'm choosing to panic on line 26 and 20 but you could exchange um, errors um, between functions and uh, decide to panic at the very top level of your application or you could wrap them to have meaningful logs and so on. So those are the basics around error in Golang. I invite you to have a look to um, the Golang blog about um, how to manipulate errors uh, after Go 1.13. And also just have a look on the uh, built-in um, Go SDK as well. Thanks for watching and happy coding.